The video game industry has always thrived on creativity, and AI art presents an opportunity to take that to unprecedented heights. With AI-powered generators, developers can create breathtaking landscapes, unique characters, and immersive worlds faster than ever before. This allows game designers to focus on other aspects of game development, such as gameplay mechanics, storytelling, and user experience. So, today, with the power of AI and Unreal Engine 5, the possibilities are limitless. We're about to embark on a journey that fuses cutting-edge technology with your boundless creativity and harness the potential of AI art to shape the future of gaming. Let's dive in. The first project we are going to create today is one that I've seen trending recently, which is using the website Blockade Labs to create a random environment, then bringing it into Unreal Engine 5 to use it in a cinematic or in-game cutscene. Now, there is a bit of a caveat that I will address later on, because the videos I've seen so far seem to be leaving some steps and facts out. But let's get started with the first few steps, then we'll address any issues as they come. So let's go to skybox.blockadelabs.com. Click Create New, which will take you to this page. Start typing in a prompt and you can generate depth if you like, then click Generate. And this is what we got. So you can move around the environment, and it did actually create blue trees, and the river is technically green. But let's keep going. You just type anything you can imagine, select the style you want, and hit Generate. Oh, I'm just going to speed through this and create a few scenes. And once you've created something you like, click download. So the files you get will need to be converted. So let's go to Convertio, upload all the photos you downloaded, select HDR from the drop-down list, and click convert. You can also upload multiple files and convert them all in one go. Moving on to Unreal Engine, let's create a new project, select the third person template, leave all settings as default, and name it whatever you like. So I do expect you to have some basic knowledge of navigating around this application. But if this is your first time using Unreal Engine, then please check out the tutorial linked below if you would like to learn the basics and create a first person shooter game. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do here is clear that whole section since we don't really need it. Then, you need to go to Edit, Plugins, and search for HDR. Enable that, and make sure to save your project before restarting the engine. Next, let's create a new folder and name it Backdrops, then drag and drop the HDR files you downloaded. You then need to go up to the Quick Add menu, and from the Lights list, select HDRI Backdrops. And the engine will create this scene for you. Pretty cool, right? Well, let's actually quickly talk about HDR Backdrops. Because as much as it's an amazing tool, it's not really meant for anything but stationary product showcase. You're not really meant to use it for anything that will be moving around the environment, and you will see why in a minute. But anyways, you can now use those AI-generated images to change the scene. And you can do so by either going to the Details panel on the right and selecting it from the menu, or you can just drag the one you like and drop it here. And you can immediately see the first issue we run into, which I'm not sure why no one mentioned before. In fact, that's not even the main problem, because when I press play, this happens. So let me just change the backdrop to a different scene, and I will explain what's happening here and how it can be fixed. As you may have gathered, this HDR backdrop is just an image that's been stretched onto a sphere to create an illusion. And as soon as you start moving around, you break that illusion. So if I zoom out like that, you can see what I mean. Also, obviously since it's just an image, it doesn't have any collision, which is why the character just falls through. But if you find the center point and just rotate the camera, then it looks perfect. Worry not, though, because there is a solution. And the first thing we need to do is actually go back to Blockade Labs. Only this time, let's try something simple. So let's just say, open desert with some rocks. And that's exactly what you want to see. An open environment, because that will really help with that illusion. 
Cool, so let's bring that back into the engine, set it up, and address any other issues. And, as you can see, this is already looking much better when moving around. Of course, the stuff on the sides that's warping slightly can be covered with assets, which would also help adding depth to the scene. But what I would like to work on first is that collision issue, which can actually be resolved with a very simple solution. So, from the quick add menu again, go to Shapes and select Plane. Let's bring that to the center point and place it just underneath the ground. And boom! Drop your character and you will see it actually looks like a decent game level. Alright, so let's resize it and make it a bit longer to cover more ground. And there you go. That looks fantastic and it kind of creates that dolly zoom vertigo effect. Anyways, moving on, let's open up Quicksell Bridge and add some rocks. Oh, and by the way, if you can't find that, then you will need to go to Edit, Plugins, and Enable it. So add as many assets as you need and start populating your scene until you're satisfied with how it looks. And when you're happy with your environment, then it's time to bring in the protagonist. There are a ton of free characters you can download from the marketplace. I'm going to go with this one here that I already have in my library. But when you've selected and downloaded yours, just click Add to Project. Make sure to tick Show All Projects, then select the latest version it's compatible with. Okay, so drag your character onto the scene, and you don't have to follow this next step, but please feel free to do so if you want. I'm just basically attaching a spotlight to the character to make sure it's lit properly. Alright, so now that we have the environment and the character ready to go, all we have to do now is find an animation, then we can start filming the cutscene. If you've downloaded one of the free Paragon characters, then it will come with a set of animations, normally located in the same folder as the mesh. I was gonna go with this animation, but I thought maybe this one would look a bit more appropriate with the type of scene I want to go for. So just memorize the name of the animation, and you can leave it for now. The next step is to go to the Character Mesh, and under Animation Mode, select Use Animation Asset. Now let's go back to the Quick Add bar at the top, and add a level sequence. Name it whatever you like and hit save. Then let's add a camera actor. And on the bottom left, click track, actor to sequencer, and select camera actor. So now you're operating the camera, which means anything you're seeing and any movements you're making on the viewport is through that camera actor and can be recorded. And there are, of course, a ton of settings and features for the camera that you can mess around with. But to keep things simple, I'm going to leave it all as default. The only thing I will do is untick Constrain Aspect Ratio just to get a wide-angle look. Okay, so that's all good for now. Let's add our character to the sequencer and attach the animation so we can start filming. So again, click Track Actor to Sequencer and select your character's name. And then click Track on the character's name. Go to Animation and type in the name of the animation you want to use. And now if I start moving the timeline, as you can see the animation is playing. Just make sure to extend the timeline all the way to where the animation track ends. Now I'm just going to get my camera to where I want my first shot to be, and then I can show you how you can start filming. Okay, so this looks good for like a reveal shot. So let's go to the camera's transform track on the sequencer and click on the Add New Key button. And then move the timeline a bit further. Adjust the camera to where you want it to move to for the next shot and add another keyframe. And just like that, you have your first shot. So this is pretty much what you need to keep doing. Follow the same concept of adding keyframes and moving the camera until you're happy with how the whole cutscene looks. Now normally this is where the tutorial ends, but I wanted to give you a bonus trick that would give the scene a bit more of a dynamic look, and that is adding particle effects. You can of course download free effects from the marketplace, but again, if you've downloaded a Paragon character, then it will come with its own effects pack. So go find a particle effect that you like, and let's add it to the level sequencer. And it's the same process. 
go to the Sequencers track, add Actor, and select the effect's name. Then there are a couple of tracks we need to add from the Effects track. We need to add a Particle Parameter track, and we also need the FX System Toggle track. And that's it. As soon as you add a keyframe, the particle effect will play in your scene. I'm actually going to take it even further and add another particle effect to make it a bit more dramatic. But basically, just let your imagination and creativity run wild. So when you're happy with everything you got, either export it directly from the engine or use a screen recording program to get a video file. Then take that file into your favorite editing app to add music, color grading, and any final touches you see fit. And hopefully, you can end up with something that looks like this. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. I have a few videos on using AI with gaming development coming up, but please let me know if there's anything you would like to see. Otherwise, as always, thank you very much for watching. Until next time.